Chosen ones, it's true. Your own family will mistreat you. They can treat you like just some random person off the street. But then they want to turn around and tell you, oh, but that's family. We're still family. I'm sorry, but family doesn't treat family the way that they treat you. Just because someone is blood doesn't make them family. Loyalty and love is what makes someone family. These people, they don't really make you feel welcome. They don't love you unconditionally. The love that they have for you is conditional. If you oblige to what they say, if you do whatever they want to do, then they'll give you love. But the minute you start to make your own decisions and do what you want to do and start setting boundaries, then all of a sudden that love tends to dwindle. They don't support you. They don't offer you much compassion or empathy. So the reason as to why you have a dysfunction and there's a shift within the dynamic between you and your family is because of how they treat you. So I'll give you a few ways of how they treat you. First, it's by the way they speak to you and about you behind your back. They have a tendency to gossip about you, spread rumors about you, make all of these false assumptions about you and your life and where you are. They try to define you and your character and they're judging it off of what they see. Your family can be very, very judgmental and they can run with their assumptions and start spreading it around to everybody else within the family. So now everyone else has their own perception of you. And when you come back around and you speak your truth, sometimes your truth is not even heard or accepted because they have their own preconception of who they think you are. They paint this canvas of who they want you to be. And if what they see is not aligned with who you are and what you speak on, then they will do whatever they can to try to convince you that their perception is right and that your reality is wrong. Now, they can speak to you in such a negative way. They can belittle you. They can put you down and just straight up just dog you. And a lot of times they tend to dog you behind your back behind your back they'll just talk a bunch of nasty negative things about you but then they'll come back around and they'll smile on your face and say hey how you doing and you're just because your intuition always lets you know when they were talking mess about you they will never give you the credit you deserve and rightfully earned now Whenever you accomplish something, you do something great, whether it's for your own self and your own life, or whether you do something great and wonderful for the family, they never tend to give you the credit that you deserve. You know, if you're the type of person that you're always helping the family out and, you know, you may be cooking, you may be cleaning, you may be helping other people run errands, you may be, you know, someone needs help with something, you're there to help. If you're there to watch people's children, you tend to, chosen ones, we tend to release the burdens off of people. We have so much strength within us that we help alleviate a lot of other people's stress when we step in. And then when we step in and we help them and we lift that weight off their shoulders because we help them carry their weight, they want to act like you're not even helping them. But as they're doing their whole thing and as they realize, oh, this is much lighter, this burden is not as heavy. Yeah, we got this all by ourselves. You ain't even helping us. But clearly you are helping them. Now you wonder, why is it that they do this? Why do they not give you the credit that they deserve? It's because of their own pride. Their pride gets in the way. Their pride, it, they are just too prideful to admit that you are helping them and that they do necessarily need you to help them. They see you as someone that's very strong, someone that's very wise, someone that's very smart, someone that is always there to help, someone that they can, you know, someone that they can lean on, someone that they can learn from, someone that they can depend on. And when they see how you, when you show up, how you help 
create so much peace and harmony into an environment or into a home or into a group, what happens is they feel inadequate to you because they know that they do not carry the same presence. They know that they are not that type of person that can really do what it is that you do. The energy that you bring, they know that they don't bring that same energy. They know that whatever it is you have within you, they do not carry that energy. And it makes them feel bad about themselves. It makes them feel inadequate because they compare themselves to you. And comparison is a thief of all joy. So in their efforts of them comparing themselves to you, they are making themselves unhappy. And anytime they look at you or they're around you, they are constantly reminded of their own insecurities. So to avoid dealing with their insecurities, they just project all of that negative energy onto you. Or what they'll do is they'll gaslight you and say, you didn't even help, you don't do anything for anybody, knowing that that isn't true because they just want to have a reason to dislike you. Will downplay your gifts, your talents, and your abilities and treat you as if you aren't good enough. So they will see that you have gifts and they see that you are very gifted at several things because chosen ones, we have several gifts that we are born with. And because you are gifted at numerous things, that's another reason as to why they feel inadequate to you because they, everyone has gifts. Chosen ones tend to have more gifts. So in a way, they look at themselves and they think, I have my gifts, but she or he has way much more than, than I do. And a lot of times what happens, chosen ones, is your family does not want to see you as above them. They want to see you as beneath them. So when they see that you are gifted at something and they know you're gifted, because they feel insecure, because they see you as being more gifted than they are, to avoid that inevitable realization that they are just not as gifted at that said thing, they will try to downplay your gifts and tell you that you are not very good at what you do. For example, if you're really, really good at singing and you can just really, really sing and other people have heard you sing and they say, you are just an amazing singer. Your voice is wonderful. What they'll try to do is say, you can't even sing. You're not even that good of a singer. You can't be famous. All because they are threatened by your gift and they know that you are gifted and they know that this gift's going to take you somewhere. So they're trying to downplay it so that way you don't go after your, you don't use your gifts to go after greatness. And they'll also downplay your accomplishments. If you accomplish something great, they will try to downplay it as if it is not as good. You know, you can accomplish some great things, some wonderful things, but they will brush it off as if it's average or they won't pay as much attention to the good things that you do. But you know what they will talk about? Your mistakes, your failures, your setbacks. Anytime something negative happens to you, they gloat about it. They, they gossip to everybody. They talk all about it. But when good things happen, it's like it's crickets. They barely talk about it. They barely acknowledge it. But they are so quick to talk about the negative things about you. All because they just want to paint you into this bad light. They want to paint you as somebody that you are not. All because, one, their pride. Two, their envy. They're envious of you, they're jealous, and they do not want to admit the fact that they are jealous. So they will look for reasons to have an issue with you just so they can have a reason to have animosity towards you without facing in the mirror that they're just jealous of you. Parents or siblings is what they will do is they will go out of their way to bring you down. Whether they do this behind your back by trying to tarnish your name, which is called defamation, or what they'll do is they'll come to you directly and have conversations with you just to put you down. That's bullying. That's them attacking you. And oftentimes this is why you feel so attacked by them because they are attacking you. I mean, what person in their right mind that has love for somebody that really wants to see somebody succeed will come and say, hey, let me have a conversation with you. What is it that you want to do with your life? Oh, do you think you're going to be good enough for doing that? Do you really think you are equipped for that? You're discouraging them. They are discouraging you. 
So they do not encourage you. They discourage you, but they try to turn it back around and say, well, I was just trying to help and I was trying, it was coming out of love. They always like to justify what they did. And they, and anytime they tell the story, it's always you being the villain and them being the victim. When in reality, the roles were reversed. You were victimized in the situation. They were the villain, but they don't want to hold the role of being the villain. They don't want to seem like the bad person in this when they know that they were in the wrong. So they would try to retwist the story, distort everything that happened to make you look bad. And then when they go and do all of this gossiping to the rest of your family, they will go with that same narrative of what they formulated in their mind of them being the victim. So at this point, when they go around other family and you come back around, now all of, a, all of a sudden the family is looking at you funny and looking, well, they said that you do this and they said this. But the family never came to you directly to ask you what was going on. They just went off of what they've heard. Because a lot of times we live in families that are very kind of weak-minded. They will allow other people to dictate their own opinions based off of someone else's opinion. And they will allow other people to sway them to a different verge, to a different balance over here, instead of just being grounded in their own self. Also... They will ask about your plans and your goals and what your ambitions are just to tear you down, just to tell you how you will not be able to do it, just to basically try to discourage you even more. So, and then what will happen is when you'll start to notice a pattern and how you'll share your ideas with them and then they will down all of your ideas. And then what will happen is you're just kind of left feeling like, well, what the is going on? So... That will probably be the reason as to why you stop talking to them about certain things because you don't want to be discouraged and you have every right to not tell them things. They don't believe in anything that you want to achieve or accomplish in your life. They cannot see the vision that you see, but it's not for them to see your vision. It's only for you to see your vision. But even like see supportive families. Even if they do not see the vision that their family member has in store for them, has in their mind, they still support you regardless. They say, I'm behind you every step of the way. I, I support you. Go after what you want. But these families that we are born in, chosen ones, they don't support us. They do not believe in us. They do not believe that we can achieve anything. And people that are raised off of love, they have people that, they have family members that support them, that believe in them, that say, I believe in you. I know you can do it. That extra support really kind of is motivation. It's fuel for people. So when you see other people that have loving families and they go after what they want, they are very, very successful at a quicker time, it seems. But chosen ones oftentimes because we are not supported because we have family that doesn't believe in us because they do the exact opposite it that fuel doesn't really get there and sometimes what can happen is we deal with the hurt of them not supporting us of not believing in us that sometimes dealing with that hurt can sometimes hinder us from actually moving forward and they instill doubt in us and sometimes we can actually start to believe it until we get ourselves out of that out of that energy so the thing is we're trying to survive we're trying to fight all this stuff in our in our minds we still will achieve everything we want to achieve we may achieve it at a different pace but it does benefit when you have more people believing in you than not you still are going to get to where you want to get to because you have to believe in yourself a hundred times more in order to get what you want to get so what are some solutions to dealing with these type of toxic family issues? Is to one, is to know your worth and do not let them dim your, dim your light. You are here to shine brightly. And if they are trying to tell you that you are too much, well, they're going to have to just get some sunglasses because your light is going to shine and it's going to shine bright. You are the brightest light in your entire family. And know your worth and know how special you are. Even if they don't see it, even if they don't tell you about it, you tell yourself how special you are. You gas yourself up. Don't worry about them. Two, ignore the naysayers and don't absorb their toxic words. If they're trying to instill doubt in you, if they're trying to tell you how you aren't good enough, don't absorb it. Just realize that it's a distraction and it's here to detour you and do not absorb. Just ignore it. Let it go in one ear and out the other. Affirm yourself. Absolutely, absolutely affirm yourself. And lastly, follow your dreams by any means necessary by being a living, walking example.